Oh, first off, I can definitely chop the heck out of this if I need to. Yeah. Which, let's be honest, if I should be in the first one, there'll probably be lots of you to chop out. But. <laughs> Very possibly. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the word possible is a uh, probably too gentle to <laughs> yeah. answer word. <laughs> Inevitable, all right? <laughs> Just to, yeah. to quote the great grimace um, in... Yes. Um, Oh crap! What what movie was it? You would know. Um, Marvel's Avengers. Uh, um, not Endgame. Was that the last one? Yeah, if, in a, yeah, no, it's, it's Endgame. Yes, you're right. I am inevitable. <laughs> All right. So to start things off, this is the first ever Big Brain Media podcast. Um, a podcast where we get people together and we talk about things and answer questions that's submitted by you, the audience which you can submit at uh, Big Brain Media podcast at bigbrainmedia.org, question mark, because I've got to check that since I don't have access to my notes. This is going to be a very interesting first podcast. <laughs> uh, yeah. With me today is uh, Blue Stack, Nathan, a.k.a. Nathan. Hello, everybody. Um, and, uh, yeah, we're going to be covering Apple's recent releases since uh, the past couple of months. Which is weird. For the past couple of months, we've had multiple videos released from Apple instead of one big presentation because of COVID. Mm. So instead of being like, hey, yesterday was this presentation. Instead, it's like over the past three months, we've gotten like four videos. It's so different. I, th- I, think, that, I think that they've been enjoying doing it, though, because they get to show off all their fancy the- cinematography. It's probably made yeah. using iPhones as well, so... Yeah, very. Some of it, like I was watching the footage of some of them. I'm like, man, they used a drone here. Like, this is straight up yeah. drone footage. I'm like, I'm all for it. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's so corny though. Like, I've had to skip a lot of it because it's just like, okay, I've watched the first five minutes of your like super spy take on the pr- presentation, and now I've just got to start skipping it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's almost like, uh, you know, they must have some holes in the floors to be able to get the cameras to go between floors as quickly as they did. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure there's some uh, decent animation there. Somewhere. Oh, no, nah, there's there's a lot of... Uh, if you haven't seen it already, I recommend the um, video series on uh, YouTube, which is uh, VFX Artists React and uh, Stuntmen React, which are done by the oh. same people. Um, and it is... Eye opening, fantastic because these are filmmakers. Um, I don't know if you call them amateur, but they're a small film stu- studio of only about six or seven blokes, from what I understand. And they do a heap of cool stuff and they really understand how to do it. Like these guys aren't new to it, they've been doing it for two decades, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And they sit down and look through, like, one of the ones that got me was. Uh, they looked through Star Wars Episode 1 and uh, were looking at some of the shots and I, you might remember, oh, no, it was Clone Wars. It wasn't Episode 1. Clone Wars, like one of the opening shots, the uh, big shil- silver ship comes down, lands and explodes. Yep. And yep. one of the things they pointed out, they're like, oh, look at that. This one little bit, they've like time meshed this one dude falling because obviously it didn't fall in time with what they want to do. So they've slowed it down. You can see where this aerial sort of disjoints where they've made the cut. I'm like, wow, how the hell do you catch something like that? That's incredible. It's a really Uh, interesting watch. Sit there there and just watch it for hours and hours of the same scenes over and over again, picking everything apart It's probably the the way. Yeah, yeah. Or you you imagine if it's your profession, you're probably sitting there just like, oh, yeah, they did this. (laughs) First time around, it's like, yep. You missed that one. Anyway, I don't so, know if you noticed the. Uh, oh, sorry, you. Can. Sorry, I was, <laughs> was going to say moving forward to the first question I had prepared, the yeah. one that I remember since I haven't actually got my notes. Um, so we've both got new iPhones. I've we've we've traded places. Might add, ten years ago this would not have happened. I've gone with the Max. I've gone with the biggest one, which was against my thing for a long time i always preferred smaller phones i still kind of do but like for what i use phones for now i i need the max like for what i'm doing but you got the mini the smaller one right i did did. 
Yeah. So, so my first question for you, because this is the most jarring thing, and I know you've pretty much used every phone for the past 10 years from Samsung and Apple. Um, <laughs> square edges again. iPhone 5, what's going on? I I love I love it. I mean, I don't... I... If I'm being honest, I'm, I wish they never left it in the first place. It's yeah. just it's just something about it. It just gives you that more premium feel, I reckon. Yep. It just, um, I mean, the, the the sort of semi-rounded edges of iPhone 11, which I upgraded from, um, or the X. Um, I mean, not bad, and it still feels premium, but there's just something about the the square edges, the flat edges. It always makes me think of like the monolith from 2001: Space Odyssey, which I haven't seen, <laughs> but yeah. like that yeah. monolith feel because they they're so weighty. Yeah. They just yeah. feel like there's sh- stuff in them, you know. Like uh, they don't they don't feel like a cheap phone. Yeah, they feel like they've actually done some work. Yeah, hundred percent. And I personally. 100% hated the, the rounded corners because without a case, I could not grip that phone. And that yeah. that's not just a me problem. Like that is just a, the edges were really smooth and just nice and round and premium, mm-hmm. quote unquote, and not grippable at all. <laughs> oh, 100%. And, and like the thing as well with like the X, uh, which I had for the 11, obviously, but Tash has been using that for a while, my wife. Um, but... Uh, like I just pulled out of the case. It's been a case its whole life, and because it was chrome uh, around the edge, the case is like you know little bits of dirt have got under the edge of the case, and yep. it's actually scuffed all the chrome around the edge. What sort of case did you have on that? Uh, she had like one of those wallet case things. Um, uh, was it like leather or uh, silicon uh, or uh, plastic? No, it was like it's like more like a leathery style of thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, the I think the, the Oh, the actual part where it clicked into though is probably more silicon. The the um, reason I ask but, is because both me and my wife, we had um, leather ones, and like I didn't I didn't notice any major scuffing. I noticed that a lot of crud got under there, like dirt, soot, dust. It, it's yep. it built up a real layer underneath. Actually, I tried to clean it. We sold them recently, and. Uh, yeah, trying to clean it out so the next owner didn't like pop off the case and was like, ew, there's, there's yeah. half of a human in here. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> well, and see, that, that's the thing is like with the, the flat design is that you can actually, like the case is almost seal. Um, yeah, because you, like seal you picked up a case at the same like, time, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I've got the, oh, um, look at the you, $79 special. Uh, MagSafe case, the clear one for the Mini. Oh yeah, oh that's right. I'm not sure I forgot you got the seventy nine dollars worth, but I mean, uh, you know, I, I didn't want to buy a thirty dollars one. Then decided I wanted MagSafe later on. Yeah, and, and then I've, I spent seventy nine again. So look, I've always been the the because like I've used cheap cases, like you said, the thirty dollars cases and that. I've been through a few in my time, and I have to yeah. say, I'd never go back because I started yeah. buying the premium, like the Apple genuine ones. And yeah, they're expensive. People are like, oh, you spent eighty dollars on a case? No, I'm just gonna spend thirty. I'm like, yeah, cool, but your case is gonna last like maybe a year at max, and then you're up for another thirty. Still cheaper, but I'd rather yeah. not be fucking around with a case all the time, you know? <laughs> so I and then how much exactly is that cheaper case protecting your phone as well? Yeah, that's the next thing. That's actually when you said about your wife's phone uh, scuffing edges. My first thought was like, did you buy one of those cheap plastic cases? Because I know they're a problem. Just, oh, it's not. A, it was an expensive case. It just hang ten for a second, man. Sorry, there's a beeping at the other end of the house, and I'm just like, nope. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So I was, I'm a little bit surprised because, yeah, we didn't have any trouble, so I will admit. Yeah, no, it definitely was a cheap case. Um, just from one of those you know, cheaper, um, the Asian, um, little stores in the middle of the shopping centres. Yep. Yep. Oh, that's fair enough. So it was, it was an expensive one. It was like 25 bucks. Yeah. So, um, and it, it really, I mean, they do protect the phone a reasonable amount. Um, but, I mean, if you have it open, they just, they just do nothing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you drop it with it open, you're stuffed. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's it. That's where your backup plan of glass screen protectors come in. 
Yeah, which I'm still I'm on the fence about getting. I mean, they've got the, the additional drop protection on these new phones. Um, and I do prefer, I have a feeling that having the screen protector on my old phone ca caused me a lot of grief as far as like, um, the multi-touch display, not registering touches. So would you, would you have said that you used an expensive, um, screen protector though, or? Oh shit, no, this thing was like dirt cheap from Amazon, probably made in yeah. like the Himalayas or something by some but little old person, you know? <laughs> it definitely makes a difference buying brand, um, because they're actually designed a certain thickness and stuff like that to be able to make sure multi-touch work. So yeah. like, for instance, for when I bought this case, I actually bought a glass screen protector at the same time. Um, I believe it's the Signet one, Signet brand. Yep. Um, and it was like 30 bucks. But funny enough, um, it said on a, it's like a self, it's not self-cleaning, but like a, the, like a finger, not fingerprint resistant, but it could clean off your fingerprints sort of thing. And it's meant to be like germ resistant and all that weird stuff. And I was like, yeah, yeah, right. Okay, sure. Uh, you, like, you look uh, at it and go, righto, mate. <laughs> how do I, I disprove that? Screen. I guess that's how it <laughs> works. <laughs> that's right. I just need a glass screen with that. Though, but I got it. <clears throat> and funny enough, um, it actually does a really good job. It like, oh. I can touch it and, uh, you know, put fingerprints over it as you do. Um, and I leave it for like five minutes, come back, and the fingerprints are gone. Yep. And it's, yep. it's actually the craziest oh. thing. I've never actually had a screen protector do that. But it's just, I'm like, oh, wow, so my, my screen looks clean. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> anyway, but that's, uh, that's a bit of a topic. But, uh, yeah. yeah. But I think if you buy the quality glass screen protectors, you're usually not too bad uh, with them. So. Also, um, um, yeah. so move, moving forward... Right, so obviously the new iPhone is a lot of things everyone's going to cover. Like, I like personally, so I'm coming from an X, so that's three years old at this point. And um, my biggest jump for me, the, the biggest reason, especially for getting a Max, was getting the, the new and better cameras. And yeah. I know you've played around with night mode because you had the 11. But man, is that freaking amazing. I, I so. Like, I uh, I had an instance the other night because it's so hot here that um, I walked out of my computer room and I looked down to where, like, our bedroom is, like me and my wife, and I heard a noise and Ruby, our dog, uh, <laughs> then poked her head out of the door and just, like, flopped on the ground because she's like, it's so damn hot in this room. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the cutest uh... thing. Now, on my old phone that would have been where the story ended because there's no way I could take a picture in that sort of light because it, it was like almost pitch black. Like there's just no way. Anyway, Did you use the flash? No. No, I I open up the camera on this phone. Keep in mind, the Max has a bigger sensor and the 12, like the plain 12, is already something like, uh, I think they said 40% better low light pictures. Then the Max also has a 47% larger sensor, which also increases the amount of light you can capture in low light. So we're talking like really good low light photos, which is the main reason I got it. So I I thought, oh, I'll give this a shot and turn it on. And it says night mode and it's like five seconds. I'm like, okay, let's see how this turns out. Took the photo and you could be forgiven for thinking I took that a day. Yeah. My, my old phone it would have been black. the photo... When you when you sent me through a copy of it the other day, no, that I was, was a like, different one. Dude. I, I actually, oh, was it? What yeah, was I'll I'll send you this one that I took just the other day, yeah. um, and like just just imagine for a second I didn't tell you what I just told you, and you tell me what you think about that photo, because it is to me as someone who's made this jump absolutely incredible. So this is almost pitch black. This is almost pitch black. Like in the dark, no, I could bad. see that's, my dog, okay. Ruby. No, that's nuts. That's nuts. Yeah. It's that's crazy, nuts. isn't it? It does. Yeah, it looks like the room's lit. Yeah. And I'm like, Jesus, that looks like daytime. <laughs> it does. It um, does. So that, that just absolutely made this purchase because obviously iPhones are not cheap when you're buying them off a of plan and just outright from Apple. Um, Especially when you're buying a uh, Max. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the the dearest one. Big um, boy. Yep. Though, admittedly, with a small storage, but I use iCloud, so whatever. Um, 
I, yeah, it made it totally justifiable to me because, like, for me, being into photography and that, it was buy a DSLR or buy a Max. And the difference between that is DSLR will always take a better photo, but they cost, like, $1,500. But you can't make a phone call on DSLR, so I still would have had my old phone. (laughs) And I'd never never remember to take it with me, so I'd only ever use the phone to take photos. So... You know, and that, that's exactly what it comes down to because um, in this in this day and age, like unless you're a photographer, yep. uh, you're less likely to have. Even if you have an SLR, yeah, you're always going to forget it when you need it like the, at the right moments. So you just need to be able to have that thing you can pull out your pocket and just take a really good quality photo and not yep. have to stress too much about it. Spot on, dude. That's um, exactly I mean, what which is exactly why I upgraded to the 12 mini now so that Tash could actually have my 11 which was obviously quite a good camera as well yeah um you know so she can just pull out her pocket and take the photos of the kids so maybe she wants to yep um whereas she, we've got an slr but i mean i honestly can't remember the last time i took a photo with her. i think it might have been april this year when i took some engagement photos that was about it <laughs> yeah no that's <laughs> that's it unless you're going to like an event that you yeah. know you want to take the 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 camera two to take some photos like you won't remember it yeah. everyone nah. like nah. people like to say this saying and i hate it 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 absolutely it shakes me to the core when people say this because I, I mentioned to someone at work i'm like oh you know i really like to get the new phone and that and they said yeah but do you need a new phone i'm like mate the That's only thing question. i need in this life <laughs> is to eat shit and breathe you know <laughs> like there's not a lot i actually need in life yeah. um yeah. but it would really be good if i could take better photos at like events and that and i'm never going to yeah. remember a camera so <laughs> you know and the thing is it's all like let's be honest photos are all about memories oh. so it's just all about it's about capturing them and yeah. that's what it's all about if, if you can you know if you can justify slash afford to do it do it and get the best quality you can well, then why wouldn't you Yep, and you know I've so got a correct. terrible memory. <laughs> so, um, like when we went over to... Do you remember what to... we're talking about today? I'm just making sure. What's that, sorry? Do you remember what we're having discussions about right now? I'm just, just making sure we're still on the same page and you still remember? Yeah, I okay. We need to take a photo for you. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're talking about cameras, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but, yeah, when we went to uh, Disneyland, God, I was, I was really thankful. Like, I just bought the the x then so that's three years ago now um mm. but we went to disneyland and god i was thankful to be able to take these really good photos and videos while we we're over there because i still look at them just about once a month i'll sit down and actually the phone will you know how it prompts you like hey you know you've got memories from way back when we made a little video for you i'm like oh cool ah oh, disneyland again hook me up <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah take me back that's yeah, no, it. that's like even when I went to Hawaii for our honeymoon, uh, what was that? Last year, started last year. We took the SLR and we took my iPhone X. I had the X at the time, and we we did use the SLR, but only for like you know trying to take proper sunset photos. But even then, yep. I ended up pulling the X out most of the time and took ones that were comparable. Yep. And that's, it's kind of like, and like, you know, why? Why do you even bother with the SLR? Unless you, unless you really need the the big scope of, you know, um, like to really open up to get a lot of light in and all that sort of stuff, and you know, large zoom and all that sort of thing. If you're just taking standard photos, you just don't need it. Yeah, that's so, pretty yeah, well spot on. Yeah. Well, moving forward, the other question I had, you haven't received oh no you're waiting for the 16 inch macbooks weren't you uh yeah we're still deciding um yes but we uh will be potentially upgrading some next year so yep. uh, definitely keen on checking them out um the the specs of the 13s and the airs look quite nice be looking yeah. up some benchmarks on it. Spec wise, amazing, but I still couldn't imagine myself using a 13 inch laptop for anything. Like, that's why you got external monitors. Well, that's true. Yeah, spot on. See, I use my 16 inch laptop now and then, which is just a PC, and I 
like I don't know. Uh, after like I've now got what like a thirty-seven inch monitor, and I've got three monitors. So my main is thirty-seven plus. I think a thirty-two and something else, a little tiny one. Um. So going down to a sixteen-inch laptop, I'm like amazed at just how less <laughs> screen real estate I have. And actually, someone at work bought one of the uh, M1 chipped. Uh, MacBook Pros, the 13-inch ones the other day, and let me have a look when they unpacked it at work. And oh, they've got it already? Yeah, they got it already. Um, nice. Received it Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, yep. And, yeah, let me have a look. And first off, they are really good. Like, as far as build quality in that, amazing. And price-wise, I mean, for what they are, not too bad, to be to be honest. Well, the, the M1s um, are... I think we worked out yesterday six hundred dollars cheaper than their i five equivalents. Yeah, well, as in i five equivalent MacBooks. Yeah, yeah. So the Intel MacBooks are six hundred dollars more, which when you can get a device that's even more powerful than that for six hundred bucks cheaper, like, it's ridiculous. Yeah. And with with the build quality that Apple do give, I mean that's the one thing you know never never cheap laptops, but they've, they've definitely got the build quality. Oh, and, and that's one thing to get. I even talk to them because then they are way not a computer or tech person. They're actually the person who's like, but do you need a new iPhone? Um, they've got an iPhone. They've well, they've got an iPhone 6s, and they're like, oh, I'll just use it until it dies, or maybe I'll get an iPhone seven or eight. They said, I'm like why so you're going to go from a really out of date iphone to another really uh, out of date iphone yeah. just to uh, keep buying yeah. them year over year i'm like fuck that noise that's yeah, yeah that's no good sometimes it's, sometimes it's worth an investment oh yeah you just buy one that will last year for four to five years potentially yeah rather than get one every year that's just an older model yep no, doesn't make sense 100 <laughs> percent. my opinion is i don't like changing like iPhone and techs all the time. Techs. Tech. Um, so for me, I'm like, I just spend like the maximum, get what I can get type thing within budget and that sort of stuff. And yep. then it lasts for years and years and years and I don't have to mess around with changing everything over. Whereas other people are like, oh, I lost, you know, all my contacts because I've changed phone for like the third time this year. I'm like, holy crap. You've been through three phones in one year? <laughs> well, <laughs> like, technically whoa. I've been through two in one, cause so I got the 11 about this time last year. So. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, uh, I had the transfer from my phone to my wife's old phone to my now new phone, and uh, because of that problem with transfer and everything, I lost a heap of stuff. <laughs> I, I say a heap, just, just regular data. Like um like the authenticator, two factor authentication app, lost a heap of stuff there, which is shame. But yeah. anyway. Um, yeah, I think if um with that sort of stuff, sometimes that loses it, but if you do iCloud restores occasionally that will come back. It yeah. just depends on which way you do it. Yeah. But um, um but yeah, but, but back to the MacBooks, but the um sixteen inch I, I don't know if you've seen this, but I got um I don't know. It's a, I don't know if I classify it as this, but apparently leaked today. Um, yeah. Some information regarding it that there will be an uh, M1X processor that will oh, come with the 16 yeah. inches, which will be apparently, I think, that, so the current's 8 core. I think they said 12 core. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I can't remember exactly off the top of my head, um, like which ones are the high, uh, high performance cores and vice versa, but how how many of each. But um, yeah, it looked it looked interesting. I mean, the benchmarks for the 13 inch MacBook. Pro out way, uh, better than the current i9 16 inch. MacBook. Yeah, I have actually seen those benchmarks for the M1, and that's that's kind of what blows me away with these laptops they've re released. Like, I I've always been down on Mac products and forever will, especially on their desktop PCs. But their change to ARM is probably the biggest, most significant change they've made in the time that I've been paying close attention to them. And yeah. It is all for the better. Like the amount yeah. of performance and economy, like as in like battery uh, battery life and all that sort of stuff that they're getting out of these M1 chips is incredible. Absolutely oh, yeah. amazing. So I'm yeah. kind of hoping the rest of the industry sort of steps up and takes a bit of notice, but 
at the same time, I know there's significant financial investment required to do that. And Apple's willing yeah. to do that with their freaking trillion dollars, but no one else yeah, really yeah. is. So that's that's right. Oh, I mean, they always will make the unpopular decision, and then everyone's everyone will pay them out about it. And then a year or two later, they'll delete their um, <laughs> they their, their ads paying out them about it, and then do it themselves. <clears throat> Samsung. Yep. <clears throat> yep. Um, <laughs> It's it's funny, like it, the one that gets me is always the headphone jack because the amount of yeah. Samsung fanboys are like, I won't get another iPhone because they don't have a headphone jack. I'm just like, how's your Samsung going? They're like, Fuck you. <laughs> The, the, the thing is, though, is that Samsung specifically made an ad paying Apple out about yeah. it. Yeah. They had it, and then like a year and a half later, they released it without headphone jack, and they did all they could to try and wipe the existence of that previous ad off the internet and obviously failed miserably and people took notice and sort of started publishing it again yeah. <laughs> to pay yeah. them out. Um, but, uh, hey, you know, don't knock it, I guess. You know, that's a thing. It's a lesson there. <laughs> yeah, that's it. But like, uh, for, for, like, the geeks out there, I mean, I've got comparison here with a 2019 13-inch MacBook, um, which is the a current Intel MacBook range, I believe. Um, the, uh, so it's the 8 Intel i5 8257U uh, processor. So in Geekbench scores, in single core performance, that gets a, a, a 929. And then the equivalent in the M1 gets a 1737. So pretty much, yeah, just a double. Oh, about double. And then uh, same with the multi-core score of the old one is... 3,739 and of the M1 is 7,549. So you're literally getting double performance. Yeah. Which is think... pretty ridiculous for a cheaper device um, that can give you that. It's just, it's just nuts. It's and a... they, I, I saw last night that someone's managed to get uh, Windows 10 virtualized. On a oh, I did, and, did and see that. Keep in mind, yeah. let's see the ARM version of Windows 10, which is itself virtualizing most like x64 and x86 Basically, programs yeah. so you're yeah, yeah. you're basically running a virtual machine running a virtual machine <laughs> but apparently yeah. the overheads are pretty low which is incredible yes yes apparently there was some stuff they could be modified to to make it work um but yeah pretty high performance so um and i mean with the new arm based windows 10 that's been brought to the surface x which just came out um it's Apparently, apparently, Windows have pretty much started moving into the exact same space as what they're do, Apple are doing now, where they are able to just make the super high efficiency, like long battery life devices. Um, I wouldn't say they're necessarily on the same level as the M1 uh, because they haven't built the process at the same way. But um, but they're starting to definitely move towards that space, and I think that Intel should be starting to yeah, sweat a little. Mm, yeah, for sure. <laughs> because uh, we, you know, with Ryzen's now coming out and absolutely smashing them, must be honest, performance-wise, so especially for bank for buck, and now ARM um, starting to do this with uh, Apple and and Microsoft. Uh, yeah, I'd be sweating if I if I was Intel. <laughs> yeah. Um, Nokia 2.0, I think, is what's happening here. So. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> but, uh, hey, yeah. uh, just excuse me again. I just got a there's a, there's a door in here that keeps opening and closing. So yeah, <laughs> if you can hear, you, 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 you can cut this all out. I knew that deep cycle battery would come in handy. <laughs> 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 I got like a uh, what are they called? A constant power supply, um, uninterrupted yeah, power supply yes. battery sitting there. I would just like shut the door. I'm like, oh, door stop. <laughs> Winner. Oh, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool, and um, I know you, you, we uh, just while I'm on the talking about that Geekbench stuff, I did a couple of things with I did a couple of tests on my 12 mini, and I compared them to an iPhone 11 and an iPhone X since we they're the phones that we had before. Yep. yep. And for for example, a iPhone X single core score was 922, a iPhone 11 single core score was 1332, so decent wow. performance improvement. Yeah. And then the iPhone 12 mini went to 1594. So you're pretty much getting the same sort of jump every generation, like about two to 300 points. Um, and then the multi-core score on X is 2,303. And then that jumped all the way up to 3,409 on 11, which is obviously a, that's a huge jump, that one. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then it jumped up about 500 points to 
3,972 the 12 mini so each generation like this is the thing is that people look at apple and think oh you haven't put more cores on your processor you know i've got a 1500 core processor in my samsung um and i've got 12 yeah. gig of ram my samsung absolutely smokes yours and i'm like well no not if you build your processor and and you like design it to be highly efficient like yeah. samsung, you know, samsung obviously have to get the base Android, which is not developed by them, um, from Google, and then they put all their ties and stuff on top, and then throw it in, and it's never optimized for the hardware because it's just they yeah. never designed the software, so it can never can be. Whereas Apple just said, you know, that's that's the benefit of designing and building your own products and software. Yeah, you just there's no way you you can get away with these look like like on paper. Yeah, all Apple products suck on paper <laughs> yeah let's be real <laughs> but uh, when you're actually doing performance tests they will absolutely smash the competition and that's why the exactly iphone right. x is still not a native phone yeah uh, like, and that's actually something still better than a lot of competitors at the moment yeah true that's something like i'm coming from an iphone x to the uh, 12 pro max and like i didn't need to do that because the iphone x like it's still fast enough to do anything that i need to do like shoot like as in record uh 4k 60 frames a second footage and then edit there right on the phone yeah i can do that that's incredible first off because even my computer struggles to do that you know (laughs) like my pc so to be able to do that right there on your phone and i'm sure there's a lot of trickery that goes into it but that's incredible and now the the Pro Max is going to be so much quicker again. It's, it's awesome. It's just awesome. Yeah. yeah. And even just going from 11 to the 12, I, I, I probably, I mean, you would probably possibly even notice this a lot more than me going from the X, but it, I feel like even from the 11 to the 12, I've just noticed a little bit more snappiness. Oh, more, yeah. Especially a couple of applications. It just like just seems to be, you know, messages even, you know, especially I've got, if you look at my iCloud backup, uh, I, I back up all my SMSs, right? Yep. I have yep. 25 gig in my in uh, messages. Jesus Christ, man! Right. I thought I'd had no, a bit. No, I, don't, I don't wipe <laughs> any of them off. So yeah, I don't wipe any of them off. So you think about that. Do you remember back in the days of the old Nokia handsets, the Motorola, yeah. and all that sort of stuff? Where you every, could only like, keep like week. 200 messages. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like every day or two, you'd be like, "Oh man, I got to clear my messages out again." Yeah, yeah. You know, then you look at it, I got 25 gig of messages, and it's like, oh. I, I knew an old fella who I worked with, and um, like I, I had an iPhone at this stage, right? And uh, I, I didn't delete my messages at that stage, and um, he was. Like, he'd sit there, he'd get some messages, and then he'd be sitting there, and this freaking phone would go, did did you, did it did you? And it was like, are you sure you want to delete? Yes. Are you sure you want to delete? Yes. Are you, because he'd get like 10 messages, and then he'd have to go through and delete messages to, yeah. to make sure that he had enough for like the next day. So he'd only keep like the important ones. I'm like, yeah. Dude, you need to get an iPhone. It's like, oh, why would I need one of them? Row, 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 and all that. I'm like, I've got messages for the past year. And he's like, why would anyone need to keep a year's worth of text messages? Who who would need that? Anyway, fast forward. Someone sent me like a picture for work, mind you. And um, like six months later, they're like, oh, geez, I'm having trouble with this thing. You know, I can get your day info again, but it's going to be half a day. I'm like, no, nah, I still got it on my phone, dude. <laughs> this message I hadn't deleted it. Why would I? And and I even turned around to the old fella then and I was just like, guess what just happened? And I told him, he's like, that's, oh, that's just stupid. That's like a one off. <laughs> I'm like, uh huh, yep. Yeah. Then he got an iPhone and for the first few months he, he kept on deleting messages and that and eventually he just stopped doing that because it's yeah. stupid. <laughs> Why? Why do you need to? Yeah. I mean, if, if the thing is, too, that on older phones, you didn't have threads. So you only had like a oh, yeah. of all messages from everybody. Whereas when when, I, when smartphones brought in the, yeah, the way of organizing by person, that changed everything. Yeah. And that made it almost like, okay, we don't have to worry about that anymore. Because let's be honest, if you, were, if you were trying to go back and find what you were trying to find in a spaghetti of just everybody's messages in one place, you would never find it. 
Yep, that's one hundred percent. I I was actually thinking about this just the other day because I was I, I was probably messaging you because to, to be honest, like between you, my mum, and my wife, oh, that's about the only people I message. <laughs> um, but I was sending a message to someone and I thought, heck, you know, I've got all these messages as a person, and I'm thinking, how did how did they used to organise it? It's been that long since I've like I, I got an iPhone four, which was yeah. something like 2011, 2012. So I've been using mm. smartphones for quite a while now, and I'm like thinking back, how they used to keep it. I'm like, oh, that's right. They just put like all of them in one folder and just expected you to keep track of like 300 messages. Oh, yeah, that message from mum. Where the hell is that? And start scrolling, you know. Um, yeah. yeah, no, it's incredible how technology's changed to make that stuff actually, you know, like usable mm. to the average human. Yeah. I've had almost every iPhone, I think, since release. So I, I even had the 2G, which was the one that didn't come to Australia. What? How? Oh, that was like they were probably people importing and jailbreaking early on <laughs> back in yeah. the day. But uh, but yeah, it's like so I had the iPhone 2G. I think I had 3G, 3GS, 4, 4S. And you know what? Two. I never had a 5S. I went five to I went five to six, and then I pretty much had everything. Except I haven't had an eight actually either. But. Oh yeah, because recent years you've stopped upgrading as much as you used to. Yeah, like, well, pretty much when I hit the X, the X was pretty much the the peak, and I I had that for yeah, probably well, hang on, would have been would have been two years or no? When did the X come out? Three years oh, ago, right. and I reckon you upgraded yeah. about a year ago to year eleven, didn't you? Yeah, so I must have had it for two years. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I yeah that's what I did and to like I could have could have um, held out but I uh, Tash was a Samsung user so I yep. took the opportunity to uh, I, I went to a like a, an SE to try to go for a small phone to try and uh, yeah. my phone as much yep and I uh, took that opportunity to upgrade Tash's I think Galaxy Galaxy S7 to uh, to the X because obviously the X was better. Yeah, um, yep. and get her on it and then after like three weeks I'm like I can't do this small SD phone thing anymore <laughs> it's yep. too small uh, so then I went and got an 11 <laughs> yeah. and then she was trying to give me the X back I'm like no 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 you keep the X you keep the X so I will not keep you on the iPhone while you're there uh, 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 yeah like, oh, no. that's something else like, I use you as a prime example of like I hope you feel a little bit privileged here but uh uh, when people talk about, you know, because I'm related to a person who is one-eyed Samsung, as far as he's concerned, like, why would anyone get an iPhone? They're the biggest piece of shit. How is Apple still a company? I'm like, well, they're doing something right because they got like a trillion dollars, you know. Um, yeah. and, and as far as he's concerned, like, Apple phones are the worst thing that have ever, you know, blessed this, uh, I'd say blessed, but, you know, landed on this earth. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. dude, like, because he's like, anybody who goes to, a, to an Android, to a Samsung or whatnot, would never go back to to Apple. I'm like, yeah, all right. I know a mate who has had just about every goddamn Samsung you can name, including like Notes and Galaxies and all that, and consistently comes back to Apple because he's like, they're good phones for a while. And then you come back to Apple and you're like, oh, yeah, that's right. This is what it's like to have a good phone. <laughs> yeah. My perfect example of that is I had the uh, the Note 8. Yeah. yeah Note that was the Note non-exploding one, right? Yeah, the Note 7 yeah. was a one, I think. Yep. Um, yeah, the Note 8, which was came out at the same time as the X. And I had the Note 8 for one month and then sold it and bought an X. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, not that the Note 8 wasn't a bad phone, but it wasn't an iPhone. Yeah, and that's typically the way it goes. Cool. Like, there's Samsung phones and all that, and this is something I try to get across to people because like, there's so much polarization with brands and that nowadays, and there doesn't really need to be. Let's be honest. Like, you rooting for Samsung or Apple, like they're not paying you. <laughs> like, you don't. No, no, no. You don't need to actually support them, right? Um, no, so no. Samsung don't make a good phone. Uh, sorry, let me rephrase that. <laughs> Samsung do make good phones. It's just Apple tends to make better ones, just depending what you're looking to do with it. 
See, I the, the, the biggest thing. Is, oh, sorry, you, sorry. Yeah, sorry, I was I was just gonna say I've got a really complicated PC setup, like super. There's nothing simple on my PC. Like even my audio setup, I I did a whole video series to try and teach people how to set that up because I was sick of trying to tell people what it was. That's how complicated <laughs> this stuff is. So when I sit down on my phone, I kind of just wanted to work. So I chose yep. Apple because it really is just like that walled garden that just works when you use it. Yeah. Yeah, see, people come to, like, people come to me and they see I've got an iPhone, especially tech guys, right? Yeah. A, yep. a lot of tech guys would be like, no, go Android. They're more customizable. But my, my que- like, and they query, like, why? How are you an IT guy and you have an iPhone? I'm like, well, I could ask you the same question. How are you an IT guy? You don't. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, because I need, I need to do this, 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 you know. Um, everything like that. I'm like, you realize you can do that on iPhone. <laughs> like, oh yeah, but I want to sideload side load apps and stuff. You know, you put APKs on. I'm like, okay, how often do you do that? Oh, I just want the ability to be able to do it if I want to. I'm like, well, see, that's the thing. I'm like, why do you want to? Like, you have a computer. You more than likely have a tablet. You know, why why do you need to bring this these complexities of like trying to sideload apps and yeah you've um, got all you know, these options <laughs> yeah like why do you want to overcomplicate give yourself too much to think about too many too many options too many things like i just want a phone that works yeah and it works all the time yeah and it never has an issue it just goes and it will last it like it won't age as much uh, even though you know contrary to what everyone else will say and they'll say it will but um I'm like so why do you why do you want to bring that complicated into your just general life? You, yeah. you deal with enough of it during like working in IT. Um, because, yeah, it's, I mean, if you do have valid reasons to, oh, I need to have, like manually load on APKs all the time because I need that. Or, you know, well, even the, the customization thing now of like customizing displays is, I wouldn't say it's great on iPhone right now, but it's still better than it ever has been because you can do all these shortcuts now yep. Um, yep. and and now Apple made it so it doesn't open up the shortcuts app anymore so you, so you can actually get to do it quite well but um, it's not as easy as it is on an Android that's that's for sure but when you do it how often do you actually customize it with the software that came with the phone you nine times out of ten you don't you have to download a third party app to do that and then by doing that you introduce security risks to your phone yeah um, yeah, it's because it's developed by a third party thing. Like when you install the app, it asks asking for uh, permission to your dialer. Well, why does it want a permission to my dialer? Why does it want permission to my text messages? <laughs> yeah. Like it's just changing the way yeah. my phone looks. But people don't think about that. The same and guy. That's why, that's why the app store is so good with Apple is that they are so strict on all their apps and they, they have a very strict process. Whereas, I mean, I know Google have a process, um, but I know that there's stuff that gets on that store. Apple would never approve. Yeah, yeah. I'd, because because Apple are all about security. <laughs> this the same guy who was like, "Why would anybody ever buy an Apple phone?" Um, he was having trouble with his internet. I'm like, "Oh, just download the the speed test app and let me know what your um your upload and downloads like." He's like, "All right." He's like, oh, "I don't think I found the right one." I'm like, "It's free. It's it's speed test. Like it'll be the first one on the list. I guarantee you." And he's like, "Nah, it can't be it." I'm like, yeah, that's it. Like, and he even show, I had, I went around there like the next day and he shows me, he's like, is this the one? I'm like, yeah, that's speed test. That's the one. He clicks on it. It's like, oh, we need access to like your internet history, your t- t- SMSs, your call history and all this. I'm like, what the hell would it need all that access for? Why? Yeah. What in what world would they need to know who you're texting to know yeah. how fast your internet's going? I'm like, that's crazy. That's yeah. nothing like what you get on iPhone. <laughs> on, on iPhone, the, it's just the like... The worst part about that is that, yeah. that the general user of an Android phone, like I'm not talking about a tech guy, but a general user will just click allow. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly like, right. They won't even think twice about it. They'll just click allow. And I mean, speed test in this case, I mean, it's a fairly well-known thing. I, I doubt there was anything super malicious there, but there's lots that would be, especially if you're sideloading APKs. Like if people have just... You know, people. That's nine times out of ten. That means that someone's ripped the paid app from somewhere, and you're trying to load it on. Let's be real. Yeah. That's, so that's um, right. the chances are that you know what? Do you know if anything's been attached to that APK before you install it? 
like yeah and on you know android you really need well if you're doing that you need an antivirus yeah on a, and, and, you know but people people struggle with the concept you, of having an antivirus on a phone but you just <laughs> bringing that up as a really good point this, jesus this episode might be a two-parter <laughs> I was just gonna say that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but like antivirus. Oh, there's thunder and lightning. Oh, that's that's actually pretty close. <laughs> um, ooh, power might go out again. We know what happened. <laughs> yeah. But uh, back to what we were saying. So uh, antivirus. Uh, there was a study done a little while back, and I say study. I can't remember who the heck did it. Um, whether it was Google themselves or someone like that, there was a heap of apps they studied. It was like 20 or 30 antivirus apps, and they found that there was a... Found, so there was 30, there was something like six that were actually viruses. <laughs> like, as in you're downloading this quote-unquote antivirus to quote-unquote clear all the viruses off your computer and is actually legitimately a virus. <laughs> yeah, and, but see, how would you know? Yeah, that's, that's the thing. And sometimes they disguise themselves so well. And like, like, you, like I was saying, a, a general user um, would just say, oh, there's an antivirus. So this one looked cool. You know, yeah. it's got a pretty logo. It must be a good one. Yeah, that's it. So, it looks legit. It looks professional. Yeah. But the, the, that would never get onto the App Store for Apple. That's the thing. Like Apple have their own vetting process. Yeah, and it's so, quite thorough it's from what I gather. Well, yeah. I've I've seen well, apps actually get rejected and like complain on the like Apple subreddit and that they're like, oh, we got rejected because we didn't in, like include proper documentation about how we implement our logos within our app or something like that. It's like, wow, yeah. wow, Apple, yeah. that's um, I I mean that's good, but that's really thorough. Yeah. <laughs> but they're trying to keep a standard. That's the that's the thing is that you know if you don't keep structure and standard, that's when things will just blow fall apart yeah and that's kind of like like i said i i android's a great operating system I'm not gonna lie it's a great operating system but that's the flaw that's the big flaw of it it's the same flaw that windows has on versus a mac yeah that's... where the, the operating system is developed to be a universal operating system it's not developed for a product so so what happens is you get this you you have to get this semi opened up os that has to allow for drivers to come in to allow, you know, different hardware on different manufacturers and then, you know, different software, custom softwares and all that sort of stuff. Right. So that's where windows is, is like never going to be as secure as Mac because it's, it's open like that and it always yeah. will be. That's um, exactly Mac right. Built for the specific hardware in those specific machines, they lock it for that they, they can they can actually build build the os to be so super tight in mac and iphones um so it's it's why you will ne if you want security you'll never go past the, like, apple because it, it, it just honestly there's no way that any other vendor can compete yeah unless you get another vendor that actually starts building their own hardware and os then you may get into that space but until that happens and um, honestly i kind of welcome that too i'd like to put out there like Again, competition in the marketplace is really good, and a lot of people put forward the whole, you know, I buy Android because they're competing against Apple and no one else is, and it's just like, yeah, but they're not at the same time. They're competing in a different way. It'd be good for someone to actually take Apple on at their own game and succeed. Um, same way AMD is done to Intel at the moment because it really oh. just drives the market to, to improve. Yeah. Well, you you know that I've been an Intel fanboy for years, and I've always yeah, been same. very hesitant about AMD. Like it's just the, the idea of it. Drivers. From you know, I'm just never. <laughs> I, remember, I, like, I remember when I used to work for this computer business, and you know, we got a uh, like a law firm asked us for advice on which computers to buy. We gave them advice; they completely ignored it, and went to Harvey Norman and bought the cheapest computer that Harvey Norman recommended. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> and uh, they come they come back with. Oh, some AMD FX processors, and then they we get contacted by the firm again, and they're like, "Oh, we've got some new computers from some from somewhere else. Um, we're having some trouble with speed. I was just wondering if you can have a look at them." We go down and have a look, and they're like the base AMD systems, and they're just absolute trash. <laughs> and it's just like yeah. if you had listened to us and got at the time, we would have recommended Intel, obviously. Um, you know, you wouldn't have had this <laughs> this issue, and you wouldn't have wasted seven hundred bucks. Yeah. on each machine like this is ridiculous but now 
Uh, yeah, I've I've been bench te- bench testing um, fourth gen mobile processors for Ryzen, so the Ryzen three and the Ryzen five. Um, I think it's forty. Oh, I can't remember. It's forty three hundred U and forty five hundred U against uh, eighth gen Intel's. I can't remember what model it is. Um, in these are all in HP laptops, and the benchmarks I got out. <laughs> The Ryzen, so it's very weird because I associate the term three with i3, which is crap. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion. And um, the Ryzen 3 is not crap. The Ryzen 3 is better than an i5. And it's yeah. really hard to get, to get your head around that. Because it's, it's the, it's the mentality, because it's so ingrained in your head. So I'm trying to remember can't. what's the specs. It's like a, isn't it four core with hyper threading or something? So it's actually. Uh, yeah, I can't remember off the top of my head actually, but um, yeah. So they uh, like I I used what application? Can't remember off the top of my head, but I used an application that essentially did bench testing on everyday use, rather than you know a lot of people bench test against games. I'm like yeah, okay, yeah. that's great for gamers, but not for everyday use. So I bench tested against like. PowerPoint presentations, video calls, um, word processing, video editing, all that sort of stuff. Um, on everything except the actual editing of a video, rendering was better, but except the uh, editing of a video, the i5 slightly beat the Ryzen 3. But on everything, the Ryzen 3 absolutely smashed it. And then the, uh, the rendering of a video was half the time of the i5. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, yep. uh, but the editing of a video was like five minutes in favor of uh, the Intel. And that just that just means, you know, the actual like clipping timelines and all that sort of thing as you're editing the actual video. But I'm like, would I rather spend five, five minutes more there and then save like 50 minutes um, in doing the rendering? <laughs> I'm like, I'd rather save that 50 minutes than you know, I don't yeah. care so much about that five minutes of timeline. So um, and then obviously the Ryzen 5 is even better again. So it's yeah, uh, like and and then obviously I I would really I, this year and I really want to see it, but I really want to see a good comparison against Ryzen versus the M1. Yeah, and that would actually because everyone's everyone's benchmarking the M1 against the Intel processors, which yeah, yeah. fair enough. That's what Apple's used before. I want to see how it shapes up against the Ryzen processors as well. Yeah, I think that'd yeah. be pretty damn cool. And, you know, I, you know, it wouldn't actually bother actually it would probably make me quite happy to be honest if uh, i mean i'm all for this m1 but i'd love i'd love them to have a bit more flexibility you know um x86 architecture still but i think that it would be really cool to see some Ryzen macbooks i'm not gonna lie i feel like oh this is interesting true i i feel like that's not gonna happen in the future (laughs) i think think apple are going down the path of just sticking with their own thing and you know what i don't blame them but I mean, the ultimate way, the reason that the M1 is so much better than anything else is because everything is in the one chip. Yeah. So you've got your memory, you've got all your cores, you've got your storage, I believe, uh, and your GPU all in one chip. <laughs> so you don't have the, the latency of having different components on your mainboard. Yeah. You know, the, the latency exactly right. of components communicating. That's why, that's why M1 can, can be so good. Yep. But the con, you cannot upgrade RAM. Oh, you can't. The, you can't the con storage. for me, so everybody points out that you can't upgrade the RAM, and that's true. But my issue is if you have a fault in your RAM, then all of a sudden uh, well, you can't replace yeah. that. You know, no, so that's your computer uh, if stuff. You, if, you, if, we're talking, if we're talking laptops, desktops are obviously a little bit different, but we're talking laptops. Um, you may not have known this, but um, you can't do that anymore anyway. What do you mean? On a lot of, on, on most of the new, well, you might have some exceptions, like maybe the high-end gaming ones, the laptops, but a general laptop now, if uh, a lot of the time RAM's actually soldered onto the mainboard. Well, that's and, a bit of a problem if you have a RAM fault. <laughs> it is. It is. And a perfect example is we have had at work, um, I work at a college in IT, uh, we've had a, um, what was it? A one-year-old HP laptop. So it was only purchased at the end of last year. And this is probably, we, this issue probably popped up three months ago. So it was probably, yeah, about nine months old. Um, that 
I think it had liquid spillage. Yeah, I think it did. We, oh, now what did we want to do? We wanted to replace, I think it was one part, some, like one, one small part. That had to replace the whole main board and CPU and RAM, everything. Wow. And that uh, all of it, now this is the part that, that it was hard to get your head around, right? Yep. Say yep. we paid $1,200 for the laptop. It cost us $1,800. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, to replace all the bits and pieces just so you can fix that one thing. Well, it's a single, it's a, yeah, it's a single board. Like, that's all it was, just a single board. Yep. And we, like, we obviously queried that. It's like, this is ridiculous. I can buy a brand new one of the new model for cheaper. Or I could buy a brand new one of the same model for, the, for cheaper. Like, the still current model. And yeah. they, 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 they can't give, <laughs> like, they can't give you a exact reasoning behind it, but it's because everything is all on board. And it's, the Ryzen's, like, are the same, the new Ryzen laptops, but they, because Ryzen's are cheaper anyway, um, that's why it's generally closer to being leveled with the actual price of a replacement laptop. Uh, but pretty much it's a write-off. If you do, any, if anything dies, you know, it's a whole write off your laptop. Wow. Um, and that's, uh, unless it, that's where this is where now we're in a space where things like accidental damage protection, ADP, is, yeah, a must have. Um, I mean, like, which is, you know, Apple Care. I've got Apple Care on my iPad Pro, um, and I haven't had to use it, but just for the peace of mind and knowing that my two and a half thousand dollar iPad Pro is covered if I drop it. Yeah. Or if you know I got a little liquid and completely write it off, then it's just yeah, it's just it's just nice paying. I know it costs a couple hundred bucks, but just having that little bit of peace of mind. Um, yeah. I keep seeing it pop up like, for my new phone, saying you know, yeah. do, do you want this insurance? I'm like, oh god, do I? What happens if I, I break know. a screen? It's probably six hundred dollars to replace it now. <laughs> yeah. So you see, if I was in the position that you're in and bought the Max, yeah, um, I would have. Get it, yeah. but with mini because the mini is the cheapest one. I'm hesitant to. Yeah, I'm I'm on edge, but I'm I'm, I'm leaning towards no. Um, I didn't get on my 11 either, uh, but I mean, in saying that, being techie, I'm one of those guys that's a bit more careful with my stuff than probably a general person as well because I know I've been there. I've seen things. I've seen things get destroyed. So, you know, it just makes me cringe when I see people like throw their laptop bag across oh, the room. And yeah. It's like, oh, 100%. Well, you know, we, 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 we buy for students, <laughs> we buy like super strong, super protective bags purely because we know they're not going to train it right. And yeah, they do a good yeah. job for the most part. But I mean, when you throw, well, actually, as we have tested, uh, when you throw it off, the, off a uh, flight of stairs, the laptop, the laptop still won't survive inside. I mean, it may turn on. I think I, you way. sent me a video of that, didn't you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, it, oh, goodness. I was like, oh, we can do a, we can do a video to, to the manufacturer so they can see how good their product is. Like, yeah, this would be awesome. Yeah. Oh, wait, maybe we won't send them that one. Yeah, yeah, that's it. They're just like, are you kidding me? <laughs> really? No, no, a little bit higher than was realistic. So, um, But yeah, it's yeah. Uh, that's the thing, way things go nowadays. Is, so really, Apple hasn't, Whilst they've like combined it into one and sort of, yes, it sucks, you can't upgrade things, other things are starting to go into that same space now anyway, just in a slightly different way where the parts are still separated on the main board so you still get those latencies and all that. So um, I think I honestly think that the, the closest competitor for the M1 now will isn't yet but will become Microsoft. Yeah. Um, with well. the, the new generation of ARM processors they're starting to manufacture. Yeah. Um, because it's it's really interesting because x86 is is like a performance architecture and always has been so you know, Intel and Ryzen, but um, ARM is an efficiency architecture. It's always been about efficiency, and that's why phones took it up early yeah. because the phones because have never been power about power. And... Yeah, yeah. They've never been about. They never were originally designed to be a replacement for a computer. They were never designed to be that. Um, you know, like now our phone's in our pocket. Uh, like, oh, I don't even know how many hundreds of times now, but way more powerful than the first computer that sent man to the moon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah no. you, you, you know, you know a better benchmark for that? You know a better benchmark for that? 
the phone yeah. that I have in my pocket today is yeah. probably a hundred times more efficient as well as also more powerful than the best computer that my parents had while I was living with them. Yeah, 100%. That's, that's incredible. That's the 2000, well, 2000s. I was going to say 2010s, but it turns out 2000s were a long time ago. Um, yeah. <laughs> that was in the 2000s. Like This isn't that far away, but oh my God, they've come a long way. And actually, Pretty much since 2007 has been the big leaps forward in technology and in power and performance. Yeah, yeah, I I do agree with that. And let's be honest, like 2007 was the first iPhone, and that's when this all started. Whether this like this started the whole. I know that technically was. I can't remember what brand it was. BlackBerry. Technically, it was a BlackBerry. So it technically was a smartphone that came out just before the iPhone, I believe. But it wasn't. It was one of those See, ones. I was like, eh, BlackBerry eh, had it? been producing like what we'd call smartphones. But they weren't like multi-touch displays. They had like the keyboard setup, but yeah, they were made to be like you know do your emails, download apps. Well, not not yeah. so much apps. Well, I, mean, I, I remember app, but... when like Blackberries were oh, the like if you see someone with a Blackberry, yeah, they're like that's, premium. That's, like, oh, they must be a really <laughs> expensive businessman, you know. Yep, yep. Um, they must have a like a Lamborghini or a Porsche in their front, you know. <laughs> and it's but, always funny hearing like the downfall of Blackberry. You ever like read the articles yeah. about like the BlackBerry CEO talking about the first iPhone? Like, oh, it's just a trinket. It's absolute rubbish. Who would want that? Yeah. It hasn't even got a keyboard. You know, like five years yeah. later, kids are like, "What's a BlackBerry?" <laughs> All right. And and the thing that the, it's that's the same story with Nokia, Motorola, yeah, uh, Sagem. You don't even remember Sagem anymore? Like, oh god, like the, that's a name I, I haven't Sagem. heard in a while. Yeah. And like Alcatel still exists, but I mean, have you ever seen like when's the last time you saw Alcatel phone? I mean, I, I know that they sell them dirt cheap at like boat phones. Like I that. won't lie, I'm not even familiar with that brand. <laughs> so, but like when it comes down to it, they were well, it's, it comes down to Apple making the ump. Is that at making the time what? Sorry, the, the unpopular decision. Yeah, like these, yeah. You know, like headphone jack and all that sort of stuff. Uh, all the time, when you think about it, every single decision Apple's made has always been unpopular. Yep. But every it, single decision Apple's made has been great. Well, let's not go that far, though. Apple has made well, a lot of pretty shitty decisions, too. It's just, you yeah, balance it. Oh, if they I, made 10 I, decisions and, like, not, say, 10 of them, 10 unpopular decisions. Nine have worked out really well, and that's a great batting average. But there, there's definitely those ones that have fallen flat. Like they had the um, the pressure touch displays that they obviously, um, well, I think they didn't push hard enough to be honest. But they obviously decided weren't good enough to include in the phones anymore. Um, yeah. I but personally like that. that they, but <laughs> yeah, but it's saying that they they kind of managed to bring that same idea into the phone without having the pressure touch. Yeah, because you still, you still kind of have that now. It's not the haptic touch. Yeah, which is um, just a long touch. Let's let's be honest here. Yeah. <laughs> um. The, the actually, you know, you're right. Like nine out of ten, because the, the perfect example of the the product that Apple have made that drives me absolutely bonkers to this day, and they still have not fixed it, and it's been like this for five or six years, I reckon at least. Is the yeah. stupid magic mouse. Now I, I have a love hate <laughs> relationship. I love it. I think it's great because it, like the the thing about even Max is they've got all the multi touch stuff on the trackpads. You know, you can flick between screens and do all this stuff. And I love it. I love that part of it. It's really good for workflows and doing you know lots of work at the same time. Yeah, yeah. But they put the charging port underneath. So yeah. Own, it, it, takes a, it takes a lightning charger, the same as an iPhone. Yeah. But you yeah. have to flick your your thing upside down and plug it in. You can't use it. Yeah, I I actually I've never used one of these mice. Uh, in fact, I have like zero experience with them. But I do remember there was a big controversy when they they like redid it or rehashed them. You know, like re-released. They're like you know the Magic Mouse two point and people were like, yeah, that's great. But why the hell did you put the charging port on the bottom? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, before, <laughs> before this time it was actually where you put like double A's in it. Yeah, which you know, uh, which you know, it's annoying to change that like, double A's all the time. So the the idea of making a chargeable mouse is great, 
but like seriously, like I, you think I'm gonna remember every time I go bug my well not every time, but you know every. I think you know what if if I had to charge it every night, I would remember to do it, and it'd probably be less annoying for me. The, the annoying part is that the batteries last like three months between, well, you know, two months between charges. Yeah. And then it just goes flat on you. Like it comes up saying you've got 2% left or 5% left. And then you're like, crap, I'm in the middle of a work day. <laughs> yeah. And you, you got to remember too, you're a techie guy. There's a lot of yeah. people who still, oh, I say still, but um, I remember talking to an IT bloke that I had a lot to do with back in the day. And this is back when uh, mice were starting to get battery lives that weren't like, just a week or two weeks, like that'd be six months or even a year. And um, yeah. he, he had customers on the regular come in and complain that their mouse stopped working and he'd have to explain that you have to change the battery because like you think you buy this mouse and you put the batteries in it and you're not techie, so you, you don't care about that sort of crap, right? It's, it works. And then six yeah. months later, it just stops working like, yeah. you're not going to buy a new mouse every six months. So you go back to the guy who sold it to you. Why is my mouse not working? you got to change the battery. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you get people who aren't going to remember the charges on the regular, who aren't going to check that sort of thing, and all of a sudden they get stuck, like you said, in the middle of the workday with a freaking cable plugged into the bottom of their mouse. <laughs> Like, oh. And I mean, like, if I was like, if I was using an iMac at work, I would be stuffed. I I couldn't do anything. Yeah. But, I mean, thankfully, I use a MacBook Pro, um, and I have a touchpad. So I, when I turn that off, I then start using the touchpad while I'm for it to do a bit of charge, so I can use it for the rest of the day. But you know, not everyone's in that sort of position, so <laughs> it's just kind of. <laughs> yeah. I just don't understand how it has never been fixed. Yeah. How, how how I would rather I, I actually would rather have batteries because I can easily fix it on the spot. Yeah. So, um, but in saying that, it, I doubt it will be long before they bring out you know ones like the Logitech G9, uh, G903 mouse. Yes, that's what I've got. Yes, it is. And the uh, wireless touchpad, uh, wireless mouse pad, and stuff like that that charges. Yeah, like the what I got. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Humble brag. Oh, I've got two. Yeah, you got yeah. 903 as well. Uh, I got a 502, so. I use that a little bit smaller one. Hey. I don't know what the difference is, really. Uh, top of the know. line is mine, top of the line gaming mouse. Oh. Yeah, again, humble brag. <laughs> I bought it because um, it has, like, the thumb rest on one side. I'd like to point out it wasn't because it was the highest. It was because it was the only one that fit the exact thing I wanted. So that was Jeez. annoying that you had to pay... Or I had to pay like an extra two hundred bucks just to get what I wanted, but whatever. Is that the hero or something? G- yeah, hero. Uh, hero yeah. sensor and all that sort of fun stuff, which maybe we'll sit yeah. down and have a talk about one day. But for now, we're gonna cut this off. We will be more set up next time because the server and stuff will be working, and we'll have all of our notes yeah. and be able to to do all that fun stuff. But for now, we'll yeah. call it quits on this. I, I love the idea of doing this. This is great. Oh, I I do too, and it won't just be about tech in the future. I want to put out there. We'll be looking to get some uh, other guests on here. It won't always be me. It won't always be you. Um, (laughs) We'll be sort of making a rotisserie of people. Um, (laughs) No, no, uh, I don't know. Hmm. (laughs) Cannibalistic much? Um, But um, we'll we'll definitely be uh, trying to make it a little bit varied um just because you know interesting discussions and such one of the things i want to do in the future um i don't know if i'll include this in the end pod but is get like other twitch creators on to talk about different bits and pieces the one guy i know who uh stopped using copyrightable songs and stuff in his twitch streams like a year ago or two years ago because he said eventually they'll start copywriting like using D- DMCA's to take down Twitch streams, and mm. in the past three months, that's exactly what started happening. Is that yeah. these companies are using DMCA to take these streams off of air, and people are losing their absolute minds because how 
dare they do this? How dare they they copyright my stream that used, you know, Lady Gaga's most recent song in it? Um, <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, dude, I, I'm old hat on YouTube and I saw all this happen when I first started YouTubing and, like, it's absolutely blown my mind that people were able to just basically stream songs on their Twitch stream. Yeah. And so these yeah. people are losing their minds over it. I'm like, you know, so I want to get people like that on to discuss those sort of things. That would yeah. be yeah, which is, which is awesome. It shows it helps people understand how to get like how to get around that sort of issue for themselves. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Now, let's be honest. We're moving into more and more of a you know DRM like digital rights management style space um, with everything now, which means it. You know, there's ways of protecting themselves from wherever they are in the world. So, well, you know, yeah. the companies are always going to come and get their money. They, <laughs> that's, they're not going to just let their products sit there and, you know, that's get exactly you money. right. Because these, these people need to, these people need to realize these songs and stuff are owned. Like, mm. just because you hear them at your local supermarket, that supermarket pays to put them on. You know, <laughs> they're not just free for anybody to use. But anyway, yeah, anyway, that's where we'll end it. Um, again, we'll be able to submit questions. We'll include that in a future podcast because, again, I don't have access to anything right now. <laughs> Super organized. <laughs> Chose the right day to do some IT maintenance. <laughs> but, uh, we'll start yeah. doing some IT maintenance anyway without completing yeah. it. <laughs> um, thanks for joining me, Bliss. Uh, again, you're on Twitch. Yeah. It's uh, Bliss Tech, is it? Yes. Yeah, so Twitch TV forward slash blitz deck um and yeah you're part of the stream team on uh, big brain media too so thanks again for joining yeah. me for the first ever and probably second episode of the pod as well <laughs> <laughs> i'm uh, honored to be part of it yeah thank, thank you. you very much